Emma. I'm being Sharpay ovens today, you guys. <laughs> Welcome back to Making Moves, everyone. I'm your host, TK. I'm nervous right now. This is my first solo pod in studio, but I feel like it's necessary to like kick it off strong. I feel like you guys see me from like people's vlogs. You see me in my boss's vlog. If you if you don't know, I work for the one, the only Alicia Motherforking Marie. Um, she's a huge, massive lifestyle influencer person and then on top of that I have a bunch of other friends in the space like Miss Remy Ashton, Ash Nicole XO, Kenzie Elizabeth, all these people that I hang out with all the time and you get little glimpses of me in their videos but I feel like and then and then of course through my YouTube channel you get glimpses of what I choose to put out on the internet and I am very lucky. You know what's crazy about YouTube? I know I'm like cutting myself off, but you know what's crazy about YouTube is that I edit ex everything that goes out on the internet of myself besides like at least on my own channel. And so what's crazy is that you guys only see my perfect edited version of me, even though it's way more like authentic than what you see on Instagram or even TikTok. I feel like you get to know people's personalities best on YouTube. But at the end of the forking day, it's edited so that I either seem funnier than I actually am or like, I, you know, a punch in enhances my joke or um, I don't know, funny sound effects enhance my joke or I don't put, put filters on my YouTube videos. Some people do. But like, you know, things like that. To, I, I cut out the shots where I don't look as good in or I have maybe like the worst double chin in or whatever. So, yeah, podcasting. I'm excited for this podcast in particular because I feel like I'm going to give you the tea on how I got to where I am now in life and in specifically my career because I feel like I've never really done a deep dive. Fun fact, actually it's a sad fact. No, I'm just kidding. But I feel like I really give tea on like my life and tips and tricks on how I got to where I am now on other people's podcasts. I I try and say yes to like every podcast someone asks me on to because like there was one point in my life where I had no followers and I was trying to get like any guests on my podcast. And so I like I empathize with those trying to like kickstart their career. So I try and say yes to everything. And I try and actually give like good tips and tricks and tea so that it's like a good episode for them. And so I feel like I spill the tea on other people's podcasts. But I'm like, what the heck? I'm giving all these good tips and tricks and it's not on my own. So this is the moment I'm going to dive in really give you a background on how I was raised, why I am the way I am, how I ended up in this career and job and all the things. So let's get started. We're going to kick start it with a segment that's going to be recurring on Making Moves. And it's going to be my mother working juicy polls. And we're going to call it maybe like the polls of the day. Maybe I'll find a fun song to put like under that and we can like really make it a segment. If I refer to you guys, guys, if I refer to my amazing producer, Amelia, shout out. She does my job. This is like so weird, me being in front of the camera. But um, if I re refer to her, that's who she is, my producer. And um, yeah, so maybe we'll come up with a fun little like song or shindig or let me know if you have like a little jingle we could put there. If someone wants to send in them singing, that would be fun to put in. So we're going to do polls just to kickstart it. And then we're going to get into the juice, the tea, the drama, honey. Okay. First poll. By the way, if you don't follow me on Instagram, what the heck are you doing? Follow me on Instagram. It's at TK's Juicy Polls. I post, I try and post at least a few poll questions a day. It's basically like I try and do juicy ones, ones that make you think. It's kind of like a fun game to play during your day, like when you're bored at work. If Instagram's forking working it wasn't working yesterday and I feel like all hell broke loose in my world pray for your influencer friends guys <laughs> okay so first poll of the day is is happiness a state of mind or a temporary emotion I love this question someone sent it in and it made me think which those are my favorite type of poll questions but ultimately I voted state of mind and I'll tell you why. I think that with me and the way that I was raised, you, of course, like you feel like sad sometimes. And I feel like those things come and go. Same with happiness. But I think your mind is so powerful that you can really convince yourself 
I don't know. I feel like someone's going to come for me right now and be like, well, I have like a actual diagnosed thing and blah, 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 which I understand. I'm just telling from my point of view um, and like what, what I voted, what I voted. Anyway, I think it's state of mind because I just think there's so many times where I, my mind's so powerful. I can like like spiral and get anxious and go down this like horrible path and I truly sometimes have the power to like talk myself out of that or hype myself up or whatever the case is. And I try I try to choose to live my life in a happy state of mind. So one of my favorite quotes my dad taught me and like instilled into me when I was little was if you think you're beaten, you are. If you think you're dare not, you don't. If you like to win, but don't think you can, it's almost a sense you won't. And then the next verse is like, if you think you're, you'll are you lose, you're lost, for out in this world will find success begins with the fellow's will, it's all in the state of mind. And I think that's so true all the time to like my boss, my friends, family, we're always like, if you think you're beaten, you are. And I think that's really true. Like, it's all in the state of mind, you know? So therefore, I voted yes, happiness is a state of mind. 69% of you agreed with me. So love that. 31% voted temporary emotion. Uh, next one. Let's get into it. Do you think people have multiple soulmates? I voted yes. What do you guys think? DM me about it. I think yes because I think in my head like a soulmate isn't also doesn't have to be like a lover or someone you have like sexual relations with. Like a soulmate is truly like someone who like you relate to and are in a relationship with your soul. Like you like vibe with in a different way. And I feel like I have soulmates that are like girlfriends, um, gal pals, like people that I've met in like my career or like I grew up with or whatever. And like I have different soulmates for different reasons. Like I'm specifically thinking of one of my friends who lives in Nashville. And like honestly, I feel like I don't know. Like I met her on the Internet and I don't know her that well but like something with us like we just click and I feel like she's like one of my soulmates but then again I hope I have like a future lover who's a soulmate too does that make any sense I don't know you guys I would 90 or 84 percent of you voted yes multiple soulmates so I guess you guys agree with me next one if you're on a girl's private story, are you friend zoned? This is one that my guy friend requested and I posted it on my story. I thought this was so interesting. One first thing that's interesting about this is that guys think about this shit all the time. They're like, I, and I am here to tell you if you're a girl listening to this and you're like, oh my God, girls are crazy. We're talking about blah, blah, blah. Um about boys and like you know if he liked my story or or if he if he viewed my story or if he liked my picture or I feel like girls are known for overanalyzing that and like we're seen as or deemed as crazy for doing so but I'm here to tell you guys do that too my brother and his friends they are like zooming in everything you're basically insecure about they pay attention to which I'm sad to tell you, but it's true. It also makes you feel less crazy because you're like, okay, they're overanalyzing everything too. They're overanalyzing what they viewed, who they're adding to their close friends, private story, yada, yada. So this question was, if you're on a girl's private story, are you friend zone? This is from a guy's perspective. I personally think no, because I feel like I more so, like I change my close friends all the time, depending on what I post but I feel like I put my crushes on my close friends now I am in a different position because influencer people this is T use their close friends to see like if their crush is even watching their story because sometimes we can't even see because <laughs> we have so many people following us I know that's so cringe but like seriously like like normal people can look and they're like okay you know I can look through like the 500 people that viewed my story like it's pretty easy to see if like John Doe viewed it but if you're someone that you have like thousands and hundreds of thousands of people voting or looking at your story it's hard to see if homeboy or like the guy you just went on a date with or like your wedding crush or whatever um saw your story so we use that I use at least close friends to see if like a dude even watched my story not me overanalyzing that, but um, yeah, I would say definitely no. Um, I think if anything, you're less friend zoned if you're on the private story. I mean, unless the girl is like 
ripping like not cute selfies and like has her zit cream on like doesn't give a shit like if you're getting that vibe maybe it's like friend zone energy but at least from my perspective I think it's you're not in the friend zone and actually 81% of the people that voted agreed they said no that does not mean you're in the friend zone okay next one do you think oh we already did that okay would you rather date into royalty or a billionaire I'm definitely going billionaire you know what's funny though and ironic is that my last name is King. I mean that would be kind of iconic <laughs> but I think like who wouldn't want to date a Billy? Like I don't care if you're like royalty. A billionaire is like and more attractive to me. People agreed with me. 70% 73% said that they'd rather date a billionaire. Okay. Um should you listen to your friends if they had to have a bad feeling about a guy? Um, yes, this one by a landslide, 91% voted yes. Um, I would agree, although there is, I mean, at the end of the day, if you're not, if you're skeptical about your friend's opinion, like, are you even really good friends? That's the kind of thing I was thinking. I feel like when you're in high school, you have like, quote unquote, friends that um, sometimes don't have the best intentions for you or your friendship and there's only so many guys you can date in high school and it gets like sticky. So I think once you've developed good friendships like post high school and maybe even post college, like I think your friends opinions really do matter. Um, would you ever entertain long distance? I guess if it was the right person, but I wouldn't really want to. But like I'm also the type that long distance kind of fits into my schedule best. <laughs> so because I'm a busy gal. So I would say, yeah, but my last relationship was long distance and I don't know if I want to do that again. I don't know. I would have to really be obsessed with the person. 53% said yes. 47% said no. Um, okay. Are you a planner or a follower? I think I'm a planner. I think I like to know the plan. I'm realizing this as I'm plan. Well, it's not even my trip. I'm going on this trip to Vegas with my brother. It's like his senior trip for college and like all of IU, Indiana University, Indiana University is going to Vegas for this like big senior trip and a lot of my friends are like in this group right so they all invited me and my friend Libby to go with them and kind of be like the older girls to like hang out and like meet them out at night because we don't want to be like too annoying but they're for a certain amount of like fun and whatever and also I think that they like I dead ass think my brother and his friends like invite me because they know I'm gonna bring the party like not to stroke my own ego, but I like, well, I'm like hooking up all these like dinners and reservations and tables and alcohol and like all the things. And I'm realizing how much of a planner I am because I'm like, bro, this is your trip. Why aren't you like taking the reins on this? He's like, have you figured this out yet? I'm like, this is your fucking trip. But um, I think at the end of the day, I think at the end of the day, I'm just a planner and he's just a follower. And the sooner we realize that, the sooner we can move on and, you know, each do our jobs accordingly. So, yeah, um, 83 percent of you said that you're a planner. That makes sense because I have mostly female followers. Interesting. OK, I had to ask this because then I was curious. Is your crush on your private story? I said yes. I do change it every so often and I definitely change my crush quite a bit, but. 59% said no, which I was interested by because they said the opposite for like guys. I don't know. Um, Let's see. There's only a few left. Okay. I thought this was really interesting. Are you more fun or boring than your friends? I mean, <laughs> no tea, no shade, just facts. No, I'm kidding. I, I think I'm more fun. I'm going to be honest. And I here's why. I think it's because a lot of my friends are older than me and I'm still like so curious and young and like the newbie and I want to like go do I, I want to say yes to everything and do all the things. But when I'm hanging out with like my brother and people that are a little bit younger than me that like want to go crazy and they're like on a different level than I am. I feel like I guess a little bit more boring because they're even more curious, more newbie than me. But my friend group here in LA, yeah, I think I'm more fun. I think a lot of people just have lived more life and they're like, eh, I can pass on that. I've already done that several times. 
Whereas me, I'm like, oh my God, say yes to every opportunity. I'm still like, I'm not to the point where I'm like really passing on things yet. Um, like events or trips or things like I'm just so excited. I feel like the guinea pig for my friends that are younger than me. By the way, if you're a 24 year old in LA, I feel like I have so many friends that are either older than me or younger than me. Where are the like 24 year olds at? Just wondering. Okay. Oh, by the way, that, wow, this is crazy. So 56% said they are more fun. Interesting. Okay, next and last question. Last poll question of the day, which by the way, don't forget you can go vote vote on all of these on my Instagram story. Hillary Duff or Lindsay Lohan? I'm going to have to go with my girl Lindsay. Honestly, Parent Trap hits so different for me. I obviously stan Hillary Duff, but I feel like it was just a hair before my time. Like, I feel like I was more of a Miley Cyrus, Hannah Montana. I still watch Lizzie McGuire, but like, and Cadet Kelly. I mean, come on. Um, and Cheaper by the Dozen. Oh my gosh, now I'm like second guessing. But Lindsay Lohan, Confessions of a Teenage, is it Teenage Drama Queen? Right? Yeah. Confessions of a Teenage Drama Queen, Parent Trap. Oh, it gives me all the feels. Parent Trap is definitely one of my favorite movies. And I feel like as I get older, I understand Meredith Blake way more. Is that just me? She's just like, she's 26. If you think about that, like, <laughs> you're like, I would date Nick Parker too, you know, if he asked. So yeah, that wraps up our poll segment of the day. Hope you guys enjoyed uh, the juicy polls. Super fun. Oh, I guess I didn't give you the result on the Lindsay or, oh, Hillary won by a landslide. What the fork? Yeah, 70% of you voted Hillary, 30% voted Lindsay. Well, I'm team Lindsay. I just, we stand her. <laughs> so don't forget to follow me on Instagram if you want to vote in future ones. And if you want to DM me any poll questions for me to answer on the podcast, on future podcasts, please do not hesitate and send me some juicy ones. I am finally going to dive into like the meat and potatoes part of this podcast which honestly I'm a little bit nervy about. Like I feel like I've never shared this much of my life on the internet. So welcome to it. You guys are the first to hear. I'm sure I've spilled bits and pieces like throughout different people's podcasts and vlogs and YouTube videos, whatever. But I'm going to do it all here. One big, I'm going to do my life journey in one book, in one pod here. We're going to like fast forward through a bunch of chapters and dissect the things I feel like are most important or were the most pivotal moments like in my life. So first question I have for myself is what was I like growing up? <laughs> this is so weird because normally I come up with questions for like Pretty Basic or for Alicia and I'm like, oh my gosh, this would be so interesting for you. But coming up with questions for myself, I'm like, is this interesting? I don't know. Let me know. But what was it like growing up? Okay. I feel like this is an interesting question for anyone because the way that you're raised shapes you into the person you are like so much. It's pretty crazy how much the way you're raised is why you are the way you are. A lot of the reasons I am the way I am is because of how I was raised and my parents, which is like goes into a whole other thing, nature versus nurture. But I feel like I'm a big nurture girl and I'm the way I am because of how my parents raised me. So I grew up in Bloomington, Indiana. I'm a Midwest girl. Go Hoosiers. Go IU. Go corn. Go basketball. Um, and I was born and raised literally in Bloomington, Indiana. Went to the Bloomington Hospital. I was born on June 25th, 1997. I'm 24 years old. And my name actually was going to be... I, didn't, I wasn't expecting to talk about this, but here we go. My name was actually going to be Stevie, S-T-E-V-I, like for a girl, because my mom, actually both my parents, but specifically my mom was obsessed with Stevie Nicks. And so it was going to be Stevie. And then my parents were like Stevie King, because my last name is King. And then they were like, that kind of sounds like Stephen King, which is like a horror author. So then they were like, ah, that's probably not a good idea, which is hilarious because they also were going to name my brother Jack, which my brother's name is Philip. We call him Phil, PK, whatever. Um, but they were going to call him Jack and then that would be Jack King. And they were like, Jacking, he's going to get bullied <laughs> in middle school. So we landed on Taylor and Philip. And 
by the way, don't steal my name. I want to name my future daughter Stevie. So I think that would be fun to like pass on the name. Um, and I think it's super cute for a girl. I love like masculine names or guy names, guy names for girls um, or gender neutral, I guess is what I should say. Uh, so yeah, I was born and raised in Indiana and I am so grateful for the way I was raised. I don't think I realized until I literally moved to LA how privileged I was, how supportive, like just even privileged to have a supportive family to begin with. But also my parents were always so supportive in everything I wanted to like throw myself into. And even if like, you know, it wasn't the sport that they played or they were familiar with or whatever it was, they were still willing to put their time and money into me and what I wanted. And I'm specific, I'm specifically thinking of like all-star cheerleading. I'm like, I know that makes both of them cringe, but the fact that they would like go to my competitions and pay a crap ton of money for me to be involved in something I loved, I am so grateful for. And I didn't realize, you know, what that, um, how much time and effort that probably took out of their lives, even though they weren't interested in it, they threw themselves into it because they loved me and I'm their kid. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm very grateful for the way I was raised. And, um, my parents threw me into everything. I mean, I do, I will say I do come from a sports family and I think people don't realize like how sports oriented my family is. I always like say this on podcasts or like even when I'm talking to my friends, I'm like, no, I come from a sports family. They're like, yeah, yeah, we get it. Like you like basketball. I'm like, no, every time I'm at the dinner table, we basically like my brother or my dad, specifically my dad has ESPN pulled out on his phone and is watching some game. And he even like just knows like who the high school recruits like going into freshman year like shit people just don't care about like I get it if everyone knows like who's gonna go to the NBA or the NFL or things like that my dad knows like who's the who's gonna be the top kid to play their freshman year in like Iowa like he is dedicated to the sports game so I feel like inevitably because I grew up and was around that one it's a comfort zone for me and it just reminds me of home. But two, I know a lot about sports. I feel like I'm realizing just after hanging around so many like artsy, creative, like music, music people, like how knowledgeable I am in sports. Um, just like being familiar with the terminology and the games and how things work. But not only that, but like I low-key know how to play a lot of things like physically like my parents put me in everything and I'm talking everything like I did soccer I did basketball I did softball I did golf I did tennis I'm trying to think gymnastics I basically was a competitive gymnast from the age I was like two till I don't know like fourth grade and I was in the gym doing gymnastics for so many hours, my hours, my practices were like four hours at a time. Imagine actually being in like second grade. I was like seven going to like four hour practice, like, I don't know, three, four, five times a week. And it was like gymnastics was life. And then I realized I'm probably not going to go to the Olympics. Like I'm no Simone Biles <laughs> and um, I quit. And that's when I got into cheerleading. And while I did cheerleading, like every almost every every summer there I don't know if it was like two or three times a week I had junior golf practice and I also took private lessons like I was a golfer like dead ass and I would play in tournaments and it was a whole thing and then on top of that I also did tennis and I played tennis in high school I did go to one practice for golf in high school and essentially like I could have had the spot on the team if I wanted it but it just wasn't my vibe like I was all about like being social and having friends at everything I did. And I didn't really have friends on the golf team. I feel like they came a little bit after me and I didn't vibe with the coach as much as who it ended up being. And so I decided to not do golf because I was like, my friends don't do it. Um, looking back now, I kind of wish I did, but I'm so grateful that my parents put me into tennis and golf because those are two, those are two sports that I can continue the rest of my life. And I still play tennis and golf all the time. So let me know if you're a golf or tennis girly. I'd love to have a buddy in L.A. So, yeah, I, I did all these different sports. 
And then on top of that, I was a camp kid. So like every summer, my parents would send me to like every camp that was possible. I went to Woodward, which was this huge gymnastics and like cheer, like tumbling, um, all like types of like acro sports. So like BMX, skateboarding, incline skating, gymnastics, like all the things that are like require flips essentially were um, they had this camp for called Woodward and it's kind of like I want to say prestigious in the way that it was like expensive and if you went there you're most likely good Um, and yeah that was a camp that I looked forward to every summer and it was a big like thing to do because I was like so young and my parents literally sent me to Pennsylvania like Bumfork, Pennsylvania in the middle of nowhere where like Amish land like I'm not kidding you we would pass like the Amish on the way to camp (laughs) and I went with one of my best friends Emma from back home and I literally was so young that I used to have to have like a minor escort on my plane rides so I don't know if you've ever been on a plane where there's like a minor Um, And they're like, minors, like, please stay till everyone has gotten off the plane. And then they escort you to, like, the minor room. It's essentially this, like, room in airports that they have. And they lock you in as this, like, huge deadbolt. And I would fly through the Detroit airport from Indianapolis to Detroit. And I'd be locked in the minors room. And um, my escort would take me to my next flight so that I wouldn't get lost in the airport. Like, if you notice, there aren't, like, you know... 12 year olds roaming around the airport by themselves like they're normally accompanied by a minor until I think you're either I think you're like 16 is the age so I went to this camp Woodward and it was like I would go for like one or two weeks and um it was an overnight camp and I feel like that is why I'm so good at like meeting people because my parents sent me to camp like I literally they were like bye have fun sweetie and I'm sure it was awesome on their end because they were like, okay, I get, we get a week without the kids and, you know, I get to do my own thing and we can go on vacation or whatever. But on top of that, it was such a good learning experience for me. And I, like, it was, some of the camp, some of my camp memories were the most awesome memories ever. And I feel like that's definitely how I got to know. That's why I'm so good with meeting new people is because at such a young age, I feel like I was just thrown into things like that so I went to camps like that I went to a camp called Camp Tecumseh in Indiana which was like very like basic Christian camp where we like did all like the chants and you did the blob and the zip lining and very like in the woods like that kind of vibe Um, and on top of many other like cheer camps and other types of camps but the two main ones were Woodward and Camp Tecumseh and um yeah, I I also was involved in like a lot of clubs and I in high school, I I don't I've never said this on camera. Have I? I don't know. I was the president of my class in high school. <laughs> Not that it matters, but I think it like makes you it makes sense. Like once when I tell people that in like my workspace, I just told Ashley, who's like basically my sister. Um, here in LA she's Alicia's sister and she's basically mine too and she was like oh my gosh everything makes sense now just like I I was definitely like like to take leadership roles one one thing that I was really passionate about in high school was dance marathon which was this like huge fundraiser nonprofit to um, raise money for Riley Children's Hospital which is near and dear to my heart because my brother was a Riley kid but even before he was a Riley kid I was super involved I loved raising money and like getting people together to do fun things to help raise money for um essentially kids that can't dance the whole thing was that you do this huge marathon for like 24 hours IU does one for 36 hours and you stand the whole time like you're not allowed to sit because the whole point is you stand and dance for those who can't so that was a big you know, I guess checkpoint in my life. I was like the, believe it or not, the executive of entertainment. So I was in charge of ent- entertaining everyone and anyone at this huge, massive marathon. So I planned like the rave. I helped with the three on three basketball tournament, like all of those things I was in charge of. And then on the weekends, I always had like my, our house was the house we had like friends over. So Um, I'm specifically remembering every new year, like in between that lull between Christmas and New Year's, I would have this big tournament, this big 
ping pong tournament annually and I would like decorate it like I was having brand trips at my house before like those were even the thing like I would you know craft out a whole poster board with a bracket and I would make everyone have team names and there was a theme and everyone had to wear jerseys and we would have like a photo booth and I had snacks and drinks and all the things and I made it like really cute invitations I was like planner fun entertaining extraordinaire so that all shaped me among many other things those are a few things that were like really fun and exciting in my life before my life in LA where I graduated Bloomington South and I decided I wanted to go to FITM which is the Fashion Institute of Design and Merchandising for high school or no not high school for college oh my gosh and when I was deciding where I wanted to go to college, I always knew in the back of my head, I was like, I'm going to go to LA or New York. But in the back, 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 back of my head, I knew it was LA. I'm just saying this because trust your gut, trust your intuition. If you know, you know. Or if you have a deep, deep, deep connection to something, just try it. If it fails or doesn't work out, you don't have to stay forever. But I was like applying to all these other colleges, like, Butler and Xavier and big state schools like big 10 schools and I knew I didn't want to go to IU because it was like my whole high school migrated there and part of me still kind of wishes like I was an alumni there or I could experience the full IU sorority fraternity yada yada I know it's making some people cringe but like so many people from where I came from experience that and they reference that in their life and that's something I can't fully relate to them on but I do believe I made the right decision when in going to FITM how did I find out about FITM well I, of course, watched The Hills, which if you don't know, Lauren Conrad on The Hills went to fit um, as well as like a bunch of other of the cast members. But I just knew about it. Like I was I was always immersed in like pop culture. I would buy like the People magazines, Us Weeklies, yada, yada. I watched like Real Housewives of OC and Beverly Hills. Like I was always infatuated by California and L.A., I think it was just because it was so far away and I like was addicted to like pop culture and entertainment. And that was just not a thing where I grew up. Like people deem success as being either really good at sports or really smart in like just a few careers. So those would be like being a doctor, being a nurse, being a lawyer, being a surgeon, being a finance or accountant person. Those are all like jobs that people are like, oh, if you're one of those, you're successful, right? But I had never heard, I I didn't know anyone or, and I've never heard of anyone like from my hometown or anything that like had been seen as successful as someone compared, I like seen, there's like googly eyes people have about like if you're good at at being a, a basketball player or if you're a doctor like people have googly eyes about those types of people in my hometown but I'd never seen someone be googly eyes over someone that was like an actor or an entertainer and maybe it's just because we didn't have anyone or we didn't know anyone in our orbit of people that you know actually moved to LA or New York and was successful um I knew no one in my orbit that did that but for some reason I was drawn to it I always knew about FIT and Parsons and FITM for some reason I just knew about it and I will say my mom did take a few classes I think at Parsons so she was very like pro Parsons pro the new school yada yada I think she took them online I'm not really sure she didn't live in New York but my mom's more on the creative side than my dad both still very supportive so anyway I uh, had this like SAT prep tutor helper person that kind of helped prep kids for taking the SAT and help you get into your dream school and I was like applying to all these state schools and I kept mentioning fit them like anytime I would go and like take practice tests or whatever and by the way like everyone in my hometown like went to this lady she was like a witch like she knew how to get your kid into a dream school and of course all the freaking suburban parents were like we'll do anything to like get a scholarship right 
so we don't have to pay for you know as much of their college or whatever the case is or they're not going to be in crazy debt so we i go to this lady and i kept mentioning finham and one time my mom we are visiting all these schools i've visited like university of florida i visited everything and every anywhere and everywhere and I was making my parents travel and like get hotels and because she was like a big advocate on you have to visit, which I agree. You have to visit schools you're interested in to just because you get the lay of the land. It's like so pivotal in your college process. So I kept mentioning Finham and I had yet to visit. So one time when my mom came to pick me up from SAT, like tutoring prep, yada, yada, um, <laughs> my SAT tutor person basically ripped my mom a new one she was like why the heck have you not taken your daughter to her dream school to visit yet my mom was like what and she's like you're paying this much for me to help her and you're not even giving her the chance to visit her dream school like how is she gonna know if she even wants to go there and like what does this work for and all this time and time and money and effort going into if you're not gonna take your kid to where she wants to potentially go or her dream school why are you not gonna take her to visit and so before we knew it, we go home. My mom booked the flights, and like within a month, we were in LA to visit my dream school, Fitum, which I wouldn't shut up about. So we go, we visit, and I'm not kidding you. It sounds like a movie, and I wish it wasn't this cliche, but we got into the elevator doors. First of all, I was obsessed with LA. It was my first time visiting. I think it was my first, my mom's first time as well. We're like addicted to the energy, the palm trees, the weather. Just everything and anything. It was like hustle and bustle and we lived for it. So we like rent a car. We're dr- flying down the freeway, downtown LA. We're like freaking out because we none of us know how to drive. It was just my mom and I. So it, neither of us knew how to drive in like a big city at all. And LA's the most scary place to drive. So we're trying to get downtown to fit them. And we get there. We park. We get in the elevator. And we go up to the first floor where like the lobby was. And I'm not kidding you. Elevator doors opened. And I was like, this is where I'm supposed to be. Something about the way Fitum has their like layout of the lobby is so sexy and appealing to a creative. They there has to be some science behind it. The way that they like designed whoever interior designed Fitum and they have these big mannequins with artwork and you know designs people have made from the school. They have massive window displays of like Juicy Couture, I'm pretty sure the founders of Juicy Couture went to uh, Fitum, but like all the me- memorabilia of people that went to Fitum, like Will I Am and Lauren Conrad and, you know, all these people, successful people and like their work and current students and yada yada. And my mom and I, like, they, trust me, Fitum, when you open those elevator doors, they, it has the wow factor. So we were like, whoa. And I thought I wanted to major in like visual communications or merchandise marketing. I didn't even know what those things meant, but I was like, yeah, that kind of sounds fun. And I started explaining to my admissions advisor, her name was Bridget. I kept asking her, I was like, she kept asking me, what are you interested in? Like, what do you do for fun? What is something you do on the weekends? And I was, you know, explaining to her all these things. And I was like, oh, like I'm really into making videos and like taking photos like I'm the cheerleader and like athlete that mid game I like pull out my camera and I take videos and I would literally make hype videos and YouTube videos for like the football team or for like my friends that played or the cheerleader cheerleaders or whatever and I like was so obsessed with capturing like the moment of the student section and the moment that the cheerleader flips and the moment that we catch the ball and the crowd goes wild like I was addicted to telling that story of like the passion behind our school's spirit and football games and whatever and I loved capturing all these videos and clips and photos and posting them on Facebook and people were like addicted to I I was so addicted to seeing the result and you know people wanting to post it on their own Instagrams or whatever this is like right when Instagram had started so I literally made YouTube videos back in the day that like maybe a hundred people watched like it was not a lot of people maybe even like 50 or 30 or 50 But I was so obsessed with like editing and I loved watching those like travel videos, YouTubers, stuff like that. Not anything like too lifestyle-y yet, but I still was like dipping my toes. The first YouTuber I ever watched was Juicy Star 07. Love her content. So um, yeah, I love just capturing moments and being able to go back and watch it. 
So I, I was explaining this to my admissions advisor and she was like, oh my gosh, you need a major in digital media. And she was like, we're actually coming out with a bachelor's program called Digital Cinema as well. If you want to continue on your degree after you get your associates, you can get your bachelor's in digital cinema. It kind of goes hand in hand. And I was like, period, T, sign me up. So I ended up basically going to film school in a fashion school. And yeah, I decided on going to fit um, I went off on my admin- <laughs> my admissions video. Basically, in order to get to fit them, yeah, your grades and your test scores matter, but not nearly as much as your entrance project, which I would say for any career you want to get in entertainment, treat your application for your job as an entrance project. Like it matters way more than your resume or your GPA or even like, yes, other experience matters. But the way at least myself and I feel like I can speak for Alicia, we love when like people show out and like make a video and, and pitch themselves via a, the, a video because I feel like that's the best way to tell like, oh, can you actually do this? It's like handing you the cake that's already made of like the exact video that they could make for us. Um, it's like them presenting it, I guess, with a bow like, hey, I can do exactly what you need me to do and no questions asked. And it's, I guess, showing your work and your capabilities and your strengths versus just telling us on, because anyone can put like good at working with a team on their resume or knows Final Cut Pro. Like just because you know how to make cuts and slices and a few edits or trim doesn't mean that you actually are a good storyteller, which is ultimately the best editor. Or just because you know Premiere doesn't mean you know how to add the graphics or the text that your future boss likes. So I basically went off on this entrance project and it was a video and I interviewed a crap ton of my peers, friends, family to kind of describe me. Um, I was like, talk, gas me up kind of thing. And I like made this whole video and I had a bunch of people help me film and it was this whole orchestrated thing. I did like interviews, which is hilarious because like now like I want to be a host so badly and I love interviewing. That's like one of my favorite things ever. And it's like literally what I do now. And same back to the videos. It's like literally what I do now for a living. And same with even just meeting new people. Like I feel like I'm a good networker because of those camps and little things that shaped me when I was little. And what I have to say about that is trust your intuition. Like pay attention to things that you liked that weren't necessarily work related. Um, I was never like the best at school. Like I would have to study hours and hours to get an A on a test where my brother is just naturally b- more book smart than me and doesn't have to study as long and he'll still get the A. Like I really have to work at that thing. I really have to work at more analytical things. Whereas like creative stuff just comes naturally to me. And like what I do now and working in entertainment, working with people and um, making videos and telling stories is what I do. And that is something that everything I do now for my job just makes sense. Things that I did for fun and that I was interested in and doing because I wanted to, not because I had to, are the things that I do for my job now. And it just works. It just happens to work out that I'm paid. So I'm, I'm very lucky and grateful to have the job I do now. But I think I figured it out because I did a shit ton of internships and things along the way that I figured out that I don't like and it honed down into what I do now. So yeah, I'm sorry if this is all over the place. I'm just like, I'm rambling, but isn't that the point of a podcast kind of? I don't really know. Hopefully this helps inspire someone. So I end up going to FITM. I basically do this film program in a fashion school and They basically describe it as an upside down pineapple cake. Let me break this down for you. So when you're making a video, you essentially have pre-production, which is like all the planning of the producer, you know, planning everyone's times and rates and all the, it's just the planning of the production of what you're going to film. Then it's like production, which you is the filming part of it and the lighting and the acting and whatever. The lights, camera, action, baby. And then there's the post-production, which is the editing, 
the where the story is essentially made. So at FITM, you would think, oh my gosh, we're going to learn pre-production first and then production and then post-production. Nope, FITM does it the opposite. So, and I think it's genius and here's why. So you learn post-production first, which is essentially every form of editing. Like I'm not kidding you guys, at FITM, I learned audio engineering. I learned how to use Pro Tools, which is like essentially what like music producers use and I was like why the fork am I learning this like I'm not going to be marshmallow anytime soon or tiesto but I'm a freaking podcaster like I literally produce a podcast and I deal with audio all the time and I used to edit my own podcast and I used to edit like pretty basics like how crazy is that that I ended up using that never thought I would um I learned Adobe Audition I learned Cinema 4D I learned Maya which is like 3D animation I learned how to code websites. I learned Premiere, Avid, Final Cut Pro, um, After Effects, which is like motion graphics. The whole Adobe Creative Suite I learned at FitM. Photoshop, Illustrator, you name it, I learned it. So that was all in my first, like my associate's degree, the digital media. Every form of editing you could possibly learn in post-production, I learned at FitM the first two years, which we did do filming as well because we would have to film our own videos and edit them. But I was editing like trailers for Jurassic Park, all types of things. And and we did a little bit of writing and stuff. But then we the last two years were really production and producing. So I had like a law class, which like helps you figure out, you know, the law aspect of filming and getting permits and all those things and how to set up your camera and how like to do ISO all the filming lighting three-point lighting how to do if we were doing like an interrogation scene how you would light that and like what colors mean when you're lighting and shadows and just how to tell a story through film essentially and I am so motherfucking grateful specifically for the editing that I learned at FITM because when Alicia Marie decided to hire me or decided to show a little bit of interest in me, she was like, hey, can you help me film? This girl think- is thinking I'm going to come in. She's going to teach me everything, which she did teach me basically everything I know. But I was like, she was like, oh, what what people don't know about a YouTuber's job is that it's like in the traditional people's world like for instance like people that work at Netflix or Hulu or Warner Brothers people like there's like a hundred to two hundred people that work on a set there's like the wardrobe team there's the set designers there's producers there's interns there's executive producers there's actors um editors graphic designers motion graphic designers assistant directors, technical designers, technical directors, all types of people that are on set to help make this show come to life and come to its vision that it was written. Writers. And what people don't realize is that a YouTuber does all of those jobs in one. So one, that's probably why they get paid so much (laughs) and because they sell shit and they're authentic. But um, when... Alicia hired me I think she was like okay this girl will help me film and like come up with ideas but what was awesome is that I came with skills that like 10 people's jobs could have been so I knew how to edit I knew how to use After Effects which is motion graphics which is the text that like moves onto screen and like you know it blows up and it looks like it shatters everywhere or whatever um I knew how to do Photoshop which I, we, I was the first person that really helped her move from like PicMonkey to to Photoshop and we really like elevated her thumbnails and took it to the next level. Um, even like I learned HTML, CSS, how to code a website, how to make a website for um, Pretty Basic or Shop Alicia Marie or whatever the case is. Like not that I coded her freaking websites, but the fact that I knew how to speak the lingo and um, now we have a bunch of people on our team that, you know, I kind of help manage or they they help us with different parts of the process but the fact that I understand where they're coming from and when I'm filming it makes it so much easier to film a video when you know when you can picture the edit in your head 
So um, I see how valuable I was as a little baby TK trying to get a job. Like that's the type of person I want to hire now is someone that knows how to do a little bit of everything because YouTubers do a little bit of everything and they need someone that can also, you know, jump in and help them with a little bit of everything because we don't have the budget to hire 80 million people for our one production. And on top of that, YouTubers are making a new video at least once a week. So it's a whole, it's that whole process every single week. Um, Whereas like, you know, shows and movies and stuff take like a whole year to film. So I'm just trying to like gas up my YouTuber community and stuff because I feel like people are like, oh my God, they're so easy. Like they just post a video and then they like get a Tesla. Like (laughs) it takes a long time to like build a brand and get people invested in you and um, ultimately create your video and your movie. It's like mini movies every week. So yeah, that FITM really helped me prepare for that. Now, I want to go into the pros and cons of FITM because I can do a whole episode on this, but I just want to briefly touch on it because there are pros and cons to going to a fashion school and I really want to explain what they are. So pros are that Mind you, this is going to be brief. I'm going to go into detail. If you guys are interested in this, I'm going to go into detail in a future episode. But um, if you're not, honestly, just don't even tell me. I I don't have the mental capacity for you to tell me you don't like what my opinion on (laughs) Uh, my pros and cons, okay? Um, I'm kidding. But yeah, so pros. One is that it completely prepped me for my dream job. Um... I feel like just another pro is that it's in a big city and if you want to be in anything entertainment, it's just so much more powerful when you're here. Like the fact that I, when I was in college and one of my professors was like in charge of this big Apple music shoot and he just happened to like ask if I wanted to work on it and the fact that I could go because it's freaking LA and like Pharrell and all these, you know, big musicians and stuff were there. Like that just doesn't happen in Indiana. I'm sorry. I I use awesome. And I know they're like known for the business school and yada, yada, yada. And I know Mark Cuban like went to the media school, but like, it's just way easier and more practical to get experience. If you want to be in entertainment to just go to school in LA, that's the first pro. Um, I think also it really prepped me for growing up fast. Like when I graduated, I this is like a pro and a con. I'll get more into it on the con side, but you do grow up faster living in a big city instead of like small college town vibes. Like there's one bar to go to. Also, another thing that a, a quote that I love or a saying I love that my mom always told me is necessity is the mother of invention. So me moving to like a city that I knew no one like I didn't have aunts, uncles, cousins, friends, family members like I didn't know a soul when I moved to L.A. So and you know what my mom says and I'm sure it's a quote from a famous person. Necessity is the mother of invention. So I knew no one. I had no connections or no anything no experience so I had to invent my experience and figure it the fork out Um, we have a big big sign in my house growing up it was framed and it literally said when we walked out the door it said figure it out and I feel like that's like you just sometimes if you don't know figure it the fork out and so I really had to build my network in my personal life and my work slash career life I really had to build that and invent it um, because I didn't have it and it wasn't handed to me. And I grew up where pretty much a lot a lot of stuff was handed to me. I'm going to state the obvious here. It's not like I'm like, oh, I had such a tough childhood. Like my parents had friends of friends in the, my small town that, you know, most of the time if I wanted to do something, they could know someone who knows someone who could help me get to where I wanted to be. But In LA, they knew no one. My mom and dad are no Steven Spielberg. And yes, they are awesome and very valuable and helpful, but they weren't really when it came to the career path I wanted to get in in LA. So I was like, okay, I need to meet anyone and everyone to help get me to eventually what was my group of people and the people that are in my orbit now and essentially my family in LA. 
So, yeah, those are pros of FITM. I also think the skill set that I left with, like the practicality, FITM is all about practicality. There is no other school, and I say this kind of lightly, but I hardly have ever seen any other school's curriculum that is as practical and useful as FITM is or was for me and my career choice. I mean, luckily, I have the career and job that I do now and it like fits so seamlessly it like fits like a glove and hand in hand however um I think the skills they, they were really smart with the curriculum it was chef's fork and kiss cons okay here are the cons not your average college experience at all like literally at all yes USC is down the road and yes I did go to frat parties here there but it just it hits different when you go to a big 10 school I don't know if it's just because I have so much FOMO from like people that went to IU it's an issue I have in my life. I have major FOMO. So it's not your average college experience. On top of that, there aren't like frat parties and really parties in general that are like typical college ones, like even house parties. Like I feel like in LA, it's like, ooh, clubs, like who's going to One Oak or like Bootsy Bellows. And that is just not normal college behavior at all. There isn't like one Kilroy's or one like bar that everyone goes to that's like the hot spot even like at other big colleges I feel like there's like one two or three big bars that everyone goes to not in LA it's like you go to one oak bootsy bellows bungalow and it's like you get a fake ID like it's like it's just not the typical college experience you're not going to house parties you're not going to frats it's just not the same um, and on top of that because of that reason it's hard to meet friends and it's also really hard to meet guys Um, If that's your thing, I grew up with so many guys and always having a crush and like that. It's so fun to have a crush. And that really like shook me to my core. I mean, I did have a boyfriend moving out here. We did long distance. But like when we broke up, I was like, holy shit. Like I used to think like people was I was like, oh, my God, you just don't try. Like people always complain about the guys in L.A. And I'm like, no, dead ass. Like it's hard to meet people and specifically guys to date in L.A. Um, so yeah, that's one thing that is, I guess, a con. You're definitely not like you grow up so fast. Like, I feel like when you go to a big state school, you're still kind of like a big kid. Like you go home and your parents still take care of you. And at least in my hometown, like the IU is like literally like seven minutes from my house. So you can just call mom and dad and they can bring you your shoes if you forget. Or, um, you know, the frats and sororities and things like that or dorms provide like a mini fridge or they provide meals. You have like a meal service or um, cafeterias to go to. Like at FITM, they don't have that. You immediately go into the apartment living life. Like that's the dorm at FITM is like an apartment. So you have to get your own pots and pans. You have to cook your own food. You don't have a meal plan. Um, you don't have like a chef that's making meals for you downstairs. Like you have to really figure out things for your own um, and for yourself, which is awesome because I feel like I grew up fast and I I was going 100 miles per hour growing up and becoming an adult and figuring it the fork out because I had no idea what I was doing. But it kind of sucks because like I look back at my college friends and I'm like, dang, I wish I would have had those four years to like dick around and still not fully fully be an adult yet like I feel like I really cut to the chase because most kids go to college they do the dorm thing they're maybe in a frat or they're in an apartment with like friends and buddies and they still go home during their breaks and then then they go to the big apartment that they have to pay for and blah 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 I went straight to the big apartment so that was a little bit hard it's also expensive AF um going to fit them and just like the lifestyle and the things kids wear like I I, moving to LA I was such a culture shock I was like oh my gosh everyone has all this Gucci everything Celine everything Prada Louis Vuitton and I'm like it makes you feel insecure everyone's getting their Botox their BBLs like it, it just it just like anything does in your environment like it affects you and so getting used to that was a little tough and and so many people have like an aunt that's like the owner of Warner Brothers or whatever. So me trying to navigate that was a little tough and like really build my network from the ground up. Um, And I did that literally by saying yes to everything. You have to say yes to every opportunity. Even if it sucks, it is a part of your journey. And 
you have to figure out the, the only way you'll get to where you want to be and figure out what you actually like and want to do with your life is by doing things and figuring out what you don't like because it's way easier to decide what you don't like like it's so easy to know that you don't like something before you actually like it same with guys like when you go on a date for the first time you can tell if you don't like them within the first five seconds it's kind of hard it takes a little bit of time to figure out if you do like it so say yes to everything go to every social event every social outing and I mean make smart decisions but say yes to every work internship unpaid opportunity like just work and don't expect anything from anyone that's kind of like a wrap on just like a few pros and cons of my college experience at FITM. Now, again, moving on to my big move to LA, which, oh my gosh, guys, was probably to this day the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. I know a lot of people do it, but like it is, su- it was such a culture shock for me. I was so out of my comfort zone. It was like nothing I had ever experienced or done before. And it was like literally throwing myself into the deep end of sharks no minnows just sharks and um yeah I quickly found myself and what I like and what I don't like and um I think everyone should move out of their hometown for at least six months or at least a year if you have the slightest bit of an itch to move out of your hometown or If you don't, this is your sign you need to. And I will tell you why. One, you're going to have this whole new, newfound appreciation for your hometown. I used to shit on Indiana. I was like, this is so the weather. Oh, my God. People here are so judgmental, blah, 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 blah. And then once I moved out, I was like, do I love my hometown? Do I love the way I was raised? Am I grateful for actually this small hometown vibe like do I actually just love Panera you know what I mean like the simple things you appreciate you have a newfound appreciation for it sucks that it took me to move across the country to appreciate the way I was raised in my hometown but trust me it just hits so different now like Indiana for me that's why I'm obsessed with it is because I moved to LA and I was like what the fork is this and I was like oh my god I love my hometown um so yeah I definitely think everyone should do that This is your sign. If you're thinking about moving, bite the bullet. Just do it. It's never going to get easier. It's never going to be a better time. Your mom's never going to get light, loosen up and, you know, encourage you to. Your boyfriend and you are never going to break up and then it's going to be the perfect time. Like you just got to launch now, adjust later. That is one of my favorite quotes ever. It's to, if you're thinking about starting a podcast or doing a big move or launching into a career or starting a YouTube channel or doing all these things that all of you guys always ask me, you're like, I'm scared to start this. I'm blah, blah, blah. The best thing you can do, I'm a perfectionist. I'm a three on the Enneagram. I forking get it. The best thing you can do is just launch now. Start the damn thing. Move across the country. People ask me all the time. They're like, you know, should you figure out your job first and then move or should you... Should I ha- get the perfect profile picture for my YouTube channel or the perfect banner? And, you know, what if I lose 10 pounds before I go on a date with a guy and then I'll be perfect? No, 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 no. You're never going to be perfect. Launch now. Adjust later. Bite the bullet. You're never going to have the perfect profile picture. You're never going to have the perfect body before you go on a date or whatever. And these are, by the way, these are things that I have done. I've held myself back from. I was like, you know what? Once I do lose this amount of weight and once I um look this perfect and once I have achieved these things in my career and once I have the perfect profile picture and once I you know my whole brand is established and once I have this many followers on Instagram then I'll start a YouTube channel because people take me seriously nope not true not forking true all that's bullshit you need to launch now and just do it bite the bullet it's gonna be hard it's never gonna be easy It's going to be actually really forking hard, harder than you probably think it's going to be. It's going to like crash and burn in your face. You're going to want to move home. You have to have friends and family in your corner that are like, no, you wanted to do this. You forking got it. If my parents wouldn't have been like, no, you better stay there. This is what you wanted. If they wouldn't have done that, I would have moved home and transferred to Butler and like tried to like go to the same school as my ex-boyfriend, like dead ass. I would have done that. I would have never been to where I am now. (laughs) <laughs> I would have been miserable, literally. Um, so, I, yeah, get people in your corner that trust your vision and believe in you. 
and they're going to motivate you when you want to come back because it's easier to come back, but it's not better. Just because it's easier doesn't mean it's better. So launch now, adjust later. This is your sign. I didn't mean to like go all Gary V on you. I just, <laughs> I wish I could tell my younger self. People are like, what would you tell your younger self when you started? I'm like, launch now, adjust later. Freaking start the YouTube channel. Start the podcast. Figure it out. It's never going to be perfect. In fact, I'm way busier now than I was back then where I could have made videos I actually want to spend time, the time and energy on. Like I could have spent way more time and energy curating my brand and my channel and all the things. But no, I decided to wait till I'm like wicked busy and don't have the time and blah, 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 blah. Just launch now. Adjust later. Instill that in your brains, people. Okay. Um, I think also moving helps you have a new perspective on everything specifically different types of people that help shape you into who you are so when you grow up especially in a small town in the midwest it's a bubble a lot of people have the same political views a lot of people go to the same church or have the same religious views like and look the same and are interested in the same things and feel the same and shop at the same stores and listen to the same music and say the same sayings and eat the same and you know it's like Every city and town has its own bubble and has its things that it's known for that people do. Indiana, corn, basketball, Midwest values. Like those are the things that like people resonate with Indiana. LA, it's like flashy Lamborghinis. Career, the hustle and bustle. New York's like the grime. Like there, you know, every town I know you can think of yours. But when you move to a big city in particular, which by the way, I think not only you should move, you should move to a big city because there's so many, it's so diverse and it's so crucial to finding out who you are young. It's so important to put yourself first and figure out what you like and what you don't like and what you're interested in. Just because with no no one else's, no mom, dad, brother people you care about too much not their opinion you just you just do what you forking want when you're surrounded by a diverse group of people that can add a new perspective or you know help you see from the eyes that they have um I think that's really a valuable thing from me is is understanding oh I would have never thought of it that way because I was not raised to think that way but that doesn't mean that's wrong it's just it's good. It's like when you travel, you're like, oh my gosh, they use their chopsticks this way. I'm such a dumbass. I've been using it this way this whole time. This is way more conven convenient and easier. Why haven't I been doing this this whole time? That's just a stupid example, but, and an example that literally happened to me in Tokyo. I was like, oh my God, I'm an idiot. Now I finally know how to eat sushi the right way. <laughs> but um, just little things like that, the perspective you gain is awesome. And then lastly, I know this podcast has been forever and thank you for listening and bearing with me. But the last thing I want to say is that your brain loves it when you try new things. And there's a gazillion articles that I could reference. Um, there's one in particular. There's this like a little blurb that I have. It's called Novelty in the Brain. Why new things make us feel so good. And... Um, the, the beginning part is just like, we all like shiny new things, whether it's a new gadget, new city or new job. In fact, our brains are made to be attracted to novelty. And it turns out that it could actually improve our memory and learning capacity. So that was just a small blurb. I literally just Googled it, but it's, it's by the writer is Belle Beth Cooper. And not saying that this is like the best resource for me to like quote, but I'm really big in like motivational podcasts, like how to become better, blah, blah, blah. And all the time I hear from people I admire and mentors and peers, people I look up to, that when you try something new, your brain loves it. And I think moving to a new city and throwing yourself into the deep end, the worst that can happen is you're just like, ah, I don't like it. And that's so valuable because now you know I don't like that. I don't want to go that way. Let's reroute. So yeah, I encourage you guys, if there's anything out of my journey, I, that was a very condensed version. I know this is a long ass podcast, but I hope that explains why I am the way I am and how I got to where I am now. 
There's a huge chunk of that that I kind of glazed over, which was essentially my internships because my internships are a big reason why I have my job now. I feel like they just helped me understand what it's like working in the entertainment industry and you know what it's like working with different types of people and where I found what exactly I want to do because I found out all the things I don't want to do. So yeah, that I and that's a that's a whole other podcast episode I want to dive into is like internships and the value of like working for free and just learning how like knowledge is power. So if you're interested in that, let me know. I'd love to do a whole podcast on that. But yeah, that is kind of why I am the way I am. I am all about diving in the deep end, doing, <laughs> you know, the song um, by Lady Gaga. I'm thinking of like, Star is Born. I'm on the deep end. That song. So I hope this podcast helped motivate you to make some moves. And that's like, a, that's why I wanted to name this podcast that because making moves like you got to make moves to get to where you want and you have to take risks and I feel like the whole name like encompassed everything making moves has my last name in it um but I want to I want to dive into how you can make moves money moves business moves career moves and dating moves all within this podcast. And if you are interested in listening to any future uploads, stay tuned. Every Tuesday, I'm going to be launching a new podcast episode. You can listen on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. I'm also going to be posting my episodes on YouTube. So you can definitely check it out there and be sure to like, subscribe, rate, review, do all the things and follow my podcast Instagram as well. I'll have it linked in my TK's Juicy Polls Instagram. So thank you so much for listening and be sure to make some moves and make someone's day this week. Love you guys. Peace.